hello hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is maya are you gonna lifestyle fashion beauty millennial hood blogger and youtuber thank you for clicking to watch this video and welcome back officially to the second episode of talk tuesdays where we just sit down and chit chat about anything and everything with me today i have a guest my first official guest and i'm very honored to have her here thank you as they say start from within right source from within so this is my little sister Amina Balunyo and I would like for her to introduce herself and then I'll let you guys know why I chose her to come here. Hi, um, my name is Amina Balunyo. My my siblings call me Amu. The name has moved around right from my dad. I am a lecturer. I teach finance, business finance and personal finance at MOOPS. And I love money. I'm passionate about money and business, talking about money and business. So why i asked amu to come here is just give us a few tips just a few tips maybe even three for us to take home and do better with our money personally i am not very good with money however i am a money magnet but i am not very good with managing money i will affirm this i will say it out loud i believe i'm a money magnet but i really don't know how to handle money you know how they say start saving when you're 20 and all those things realistically not everyone personally i saved yeah i've been saving from the time i had my back account which was like this six back but what i save is what i eat right at some point it comes up and something comes up and you're like oh, let me buy this and then you use your savings so for me i feel like where there's life there's hope so where i am alive right now there's hope for me to do better with my money i am making money i have businesses that i do that bring in money that sustain me so i want a few tips you know to make my relationship with money better also what's a money magnet you attract money right i attract money like yeah. i'm always like you know how those affirmations they keep on saying one of the affirmations actually if you listen to affirmations is i am a money magnet i believe i am like what I was saying is in town, but I am like, okay, I know it's going to happen. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. So um, tips. Mashallah. Sorry. <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> Say mashallah. Mashallah. Tips to deal with money. I think um, not all of us are good with money. I think very few people are good with money. The idea, the thing about having money is, you need to learn how to keep it and most people think um handling money and having money is all about being rigid and frugal with yourself and no being frugal does not mean you're going to actually have money getting figuring out ways to keep that little money that you have is going to um increase on the money you have because i mean um my sister says she's a money magnet and says she's not good with money but the money keeps on rolling in you know and she keeps on finding ways to make money i think the idea is making money and trying to make that money help you make money so what are some of the tips that you would want to know what are some of the problems you've encountered through okay so for me i like to ask yeah i like to ask questions even uh, that's why when i go to certain conferences where there's these big people mm. i've told you this where there's all these big people coming to inspire us who are younger than them like i people don't give us the role like i want the role of maya because most people have small businesses realistically yeah so imagine someone who makes um i have my business in my house right now so it might be a little bit bigger than other people but i want tips that are going to get touch for people who for example if my business if i earn 150k a month mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. and that's like my profit right after calculating that that the input of the business and all those things on that 150 of profit how how should i start in saving should i start with 10k because you know sometimes it's like hey, why am i saving this 10k it's so little let me wait for bigger money like i want tips as they might sound as um naive as that but for me that's what i like like that's why i want someone to go and say okay if you bought this at 2000 shillings yo you spend this amount of money 
of, of time and money and resources doing this add that you get you sell at this point this is your profit like i just want it as raw as possible so for me i would want a tip of how to start saving as small as i can and then how to handle how to not to, to stop borrowing from i i, I have an a weakness guys i have a weakness and here I am sorrow, so sometimes I think it might come off like she's so stupid, but I just want to be as honest as I can with you guys. So I um I I borrow money for my business. Right? I don't borrow from outside, I borrow for my business and I always knock it down. I know it's not good, but I like I always say I always pay back. Always. Even fifty shillings. Excuse me. I always paid back so how do I stop that how do I learn how to you know I don't know like just the okay I think simplest the simplest let me start with a back story about myself and when I started earning and what what happened what I went through and the things that I learned so you remember when I got my job at Moons right they hadn't paid us for a while so they decided you know what we're going to give these guys a big check for like the next um, to cover some to cover the few months that they paid us and a month ahead. So I got a check of 10 million shillings, you guys. 10 million. I'd never seen this in my life. I saved about um, 4 million of it. And I said I never touched it. That's, listen to okay. the story. I saved about 4 million and I mean I am fresh out of you fresh out of uni just say my job, the excitement and all not so many bills you know not so many bills i'm not paying rent i'm not buying food so usually when they say when you're getting money um deal with 80 percent of it put it somewhere with more sensible then indulge in 20 percent but realistically at that point i could not i'm young i didn't see i thought well, like you know let me save 40 percent of the money then i spent six million i don't know how that money got done. Actually, no, I know how. Enjoyments, you guys. I love wow. going out. Let's go wow. out. Yeah. Fast forward three months later. I think I spent about six million in three months. Three months later, um, my sister here and sip and show. You know? Oh, I went my God. my four million shillings. Can I tell this story? <laughs> Girl, you guys, you see these Nigerians who come in and just you know, I remember she even paid me in dollars. <laughs> Chom was handling the books because Chom always bless her heart. You guys know Chom. If you don't know, she's a best friend of mine who's always on this channel. She she always, when I used to have a store, she used to, you know how you um, delegate. Chom always handled my books. Like she was handling the money. and Because they're so busy. There's so many people. People are enjoying shopping, blah, blah, blah. blah. Chom was a money chick. And Tom was like, she, anyway, this chick, if that was my Nigerian story of, she made it rain on me, right? She made it rain. She shocked. I was like, okay, sis, okay. I, I must have spent about $400, $500 in a space of, uh, how long? Three hours? Yeah. And you see, I didn't feel bad about it because I had saved that money. The idea of saving is um, to enjoy, to enjoy, like keeping money for the future to enjoy that money. It's not about keeping money so that it stays there because you've got to use that money at some point. Minus the, does that include the emergency fund? Yeah, the, yes, it should include your emergency fund. But I did not, I had not started my emergency fund at that point in time. So after that, I went broke, you know, that whole time I'm enjoying, I'm spending money, I am having a good time. I, all of my 10 million got done in like four months, you guys. And yeah, uh, I said, I kind of regret it, but I went like, you know what, lesson learned. First of all, um, impulse purchases, you know, whatever I saw in the store and I liked, I bought even if I didn't need. I and it didn't fit. <laughs> I ended up giving out, I think, 50% of the clothes. A year later, I still have maybe 20% of the clothes that I haven't worn since 2021. That was 2017. So I think the first tip is you need to avoid impulse purchases. And the way you can do that is um, learn about yourself. Be aware about yourself. What triggers your emotions, you know? What will trigger your emotions for you to just go and buy? 
for example when i'm sad i just go like ah like last week i was sad about something that's when like you know what ah let me you know what yellow yellow <laughs> let me just go and spend and do this yellow you need to know what triggers your emotions to spend that's the first thing because at the end of the day feeling bad about it is not going to bring back the money is not going to do anything first figure out what triggers my emotions to spend because that's when you're going to dip into even that emergency fund and the second thing is um you need to create an emergency fund you guys people may think it's it's um, not useful, not whatever, but you need to create an emergency fund. Especially if you're above, if you're 30 and above, in the 20s you can make, like it's time for you to learn and make mistakes and, and people keep on saying it's never too late. You guys, there is such a thing as too late. It is there. Um, I don't know if you... Do, sorry to interject. Huh? I feel like what Paul says never too late. It's also like a motivation point to give some people to save. Because now if you tell me, oh, it's too late for you to start saving, I turn 30, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's too late, it's like, okay, can the dear Zenkola or can the dear bad? So that's, I guess that's why Paul says it's never too late to. Yeah, the reason I'll say it's, it's um, there is such a thing as too late is think of it in terms of retirement, you know? The idea, retirement, achieving certain goals. So if you wanted to like buy a car in two years and you don't start saving now, when the two years are almost up, will you have your money? It would be too late for you to do that. So now, especially when it comes to retirement, if you are in your thirties, you guys, NSSF, if you have a business, I'm going to, I, kept, I keep on telling my sister to open up an NSSF account. I don't know if you have. NSSF is something that will do you good because um, there is something that's called time value of money where your money just keeps on making money over time and over time and over time. So if it's, when it comes to retirement, there is such a thing as too late because the idea of retirement is for you to keep on, I mean if you want to keep on living this life, lifestyle, soft life, you know, traveling, having you know, like a soft life, thing. you have to work to get the soft life. Yeah, you know. you've got to work. So if you want to, when you retire, you're going to retire at about 65, right? Life expectancy has increased, you guys. You have, a, you have another maybe 10 more years to live. You're not earning the same amount of money. You don't have the energy. Where are you going to get that money to fund your, your 4 million lifestyle, your 4 million shilling lifestyle a month? I guess at that point it would even be beyond lifestyle because there's illnesses, there's yeah. hospitals. And today I got thinking, okay, first I would like you to explain to people who are businesses mm. here. Because most people, personally I didn't know that if you have a business, you can uh, do the NSSF monthly thing. Yeah. But just try and explain because I'm sure it will, someone who's watching is like me and they didn't know. So if for someone who has a business, how do they go about the NSSF? What do you do? How do you open? So can I just put, do I dictate the amount of money that I put? On the NSSF thing or they dictate for me as a business you will I think it's voluntary so you do dictate the amount of money that you want to put it's not like you are in a corporation where they actually specify you do put oh, in and businesses are yeah you do put um, unless you're registered as a company then your employees I think five and above you would have to put in for each and one, for each, each one, ten percent, then they'll have to put in five percent. But for a small business, micro businesses, you will keep on putting in a certain amount of money that you feel you can. Add. So say a hundred k, yeah, two hundred k, and that a hundred k you guys can yeah, go over time. Over is, time is, is imagine a hundred k in ten years. Just a hundred k every month is earning interest. In ten years, will do you so much, and that's money you you don't wake up to go and work to do and to go and work for you don't wake I need up to get that. there's really need not to there's not effort it. in in this for you to make this money and registration is free i've got an nssf me as me i used to mm. be employed yeah so i don't know if i should use, i do i use that i think i need to change a number actually i still get statements every month but i don't open i'm thinking now yeah, what are you okay. sorry about that we had some memory card issues but we're back so we were saying nssf so one way for people who are self-employed with their small businesses to save is to 
get into remitting a certain amount of money to NSSF every month it's for your retirement you know it's it's a social security fund it's for your retirement so it's not for um not an emergency fund. It's not an emergency yeah. fund. It's not. Sure. It's for your retirement. You cannot pull out the money anytime you want it. It's when you hit um, 65 years of age, then you can't pull out the money. That's for your retirement. So you need to create an emergency fund for you to to live by. You know, times are hard. People are getting laid off, and you're never sure what may go wrong in your. Unless you have a contract in at your workplace that's a contract for life. But that's usually, that's usually um, professors and people who work at universities and people who are doing But is there a contract for life? Yeah, some no. contracts are for life. Really? Never yeah. knew that. Some contracts, like now, if after my master's degree and I, um, I get confirmed into school service, my, I, do, I never have to ever renew my contract. Until well, when? Until you're tired. When I'm tired or I am fired, like right off. Oh yeah. So when you, uh, yeah, that's what I'm. Oh yeah. When you fired. Yeah. Oh. But the contract oh, is okay, for life. Oh okay, 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 okay. So the contract is for life. You just have to be on your best behavior and get the work done. Yeah. So as a thirty-year-old, hmm. All right. What are the three things that I should? Okay. We talked about NSSF because I'm self-employed. I am a hustler and we talked about emergency fund um these are all different types of savings yeah nssf for your retirement or let's call it a retirement fund yeah and then um emergency to, fund i'm sorry for it you people need to stop relying on their children for, yeah i get i get i get what because the children saying. will grow up i like imagine imagine daddy was relying on us you have a child you have things to you have your life to live you know? i remember our dad one of the things we usually have meetings and one of the things that he was telling us as his girls is like one of the things that he dreads or he fears mm -hmm. is getting his old age and getting ill and he cannot you know take care of himself and stuff like that and he doesn't have enough money to take care of himself so maybe for like for guys who have land they'll be like let me just buy this purchase this property in case i have a health emergency right you know that like land that's very valuable yeah i will sell that and that will be say one billion or something and that will take care of your health emergencies right yeah. so i think that's also a smart way to go about to, it your, yeah your emergency fund and it should be you should keep that money somewhere where you cannot access it your emergency fund is not for things of okay now i've run out of fuel let me pay it's for like things that you never ever expected to happen you get laid off you know um, COVID. COVID. One of the ways actually, because we did research and we found out that one of the ways businesses actually remained afloat was because this also applies to businesses, was because they had savings. And imagine, yeah. In, in savings for emergencies. So they kept on paying their employees through this. Yeah, this, actually, this is something that you and Sherry talked about the other time in your thing. Mm -hmm. That if you have a business, however small it is, make sure at the end of the month you get money out of it and keep it for the business because that money will be used for stock you know it will be used for as a business imagine unit. you get emergencies and and your the taxes increase yeah beyond what you expect okay i'm just looking out of reality mm. so you know or you order stock and when the tax when they get here there's some you know uganda and our system so you just have to prepare yourself for something but anyway like just in conclusion right mm -hmm. Maya, as me, I'm a mother, I am trying to hustle, I, you know, there are three things, accounts that I should have, or maybe four, tell me if I'm right, okay, I'll do a retirement, retirement that's, account. that's savings, for retirement, so don't even call it saving, just call it your retirement, retirement, also that can be NSSF as well, yeah, right, and then I'll have the emergency fund, mm hmm right yes where i put you know i feel like it can even be as little as ten thousand shillings to yeah. be honest as long as even if it's 5k because i've had people with their stories and it's like no i used to put 5k aside every month and this is where like time flies so yeah. i think even 5k is because you know sometimes personally i've gotten discouraged from saving because you know you hear people's stories and by the way not everything that people say is true 
Nah. Now for me, one way, one of the ways that I like to save is Chibina. Mm. We all know those circles, eh? So you just get, cause it's easier and I like to be on the last months of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Always. We can swap, eh? No. In November. So I'm um, October, she's November, we're in the same thing. So we save a certain amount of money every month and someone receives so that can be another way that can be like your daily okay not your yeah. daily or your you can also get shampoo in your emergency fund yeah you can get some your emergency fund should be minimum three months of your entire living expenses yeah actually that's what they say three months minimum three months of your entire living expenses but you just need to keep on adding if you can it doesn't adding. have like you don't get your three months and then stop yeah. right because at a certain point you may want to do something with the money and you know okay now it, it you may be secure and everything and you may remove some money but minimum three months never go below three months and then the other account to have is um saving for long term okay for long term maybe emergency maybe that's a lot of saving no because okay think of it as saving no, for long term no i know term. it's good i'm not saying think it's a of bad it thing as saving for investing saving for a car because saving is just keeping money, money to time. consume it later later so the saving is you may what are you going to use that money for what don't you have dreams and goals that that are long term you see because More like travel also yeah save for travel save for like that's that's the idea of saving it's not just to keep money to stay in your account and sometimes to be honest you'd rather have the money out of your account and it multiplies instead of sitting in the account yeah. and it does nothing so what are what are we saving for we are saving for retirement we're saving for our emergencies we're saving for the things the the, the very for expensive things that that, that you, you want desire. to do, that you desire a house yeah. something a car Louis Vuittons. i keep on i i tell myself once i finish my master's degree i have to buy myself a pair of Louis Vuittons, and i'm saving for that like things you desire because if you cannot afford to pay for them every month i mean i cannot afford a thousand dollars every month to buy your shoes so i i've got to save for them you see and then like for small things and you then know? you have your normal account that you use to spend buying groceries and stuff right? yeah those are many accounts same those are very many accounts right mm -hmm. there are four five accounts and also accounts are cheap we need to can you help us actually do research on the cheapest banks to bank with and then we'll be back and tell us about that yes 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 i do want to i really want to do that because there's banks where um I have experience with Rebounds with Barclays, which is APSA now. I would never it's recommend not, anyone to go there. Nah, I don't. That's that's. There's someone who can afford the race, but for me, it does not work for me. I closed. That was my first account, and I liked it. Then they put certain things, and then equity. Equity is good. It's good it's for cool. savings and yeah, stuff that charges a very who don't make a lot of they, money. Yeah, do they even have that much charges? No. Mm. Then my other bank is NCBA now, which was CBA, which is good. I like they're very efficient. I call them in case I'm transacting something, but also that their charges are. I would if someone I would recommend equity to another person who doesn't do many online transactions and stuff the accounts the accounts seem like there are many but let me tell you how i do mine um one for especially like my long term the things i want to buy like the chibina we're in i either want to use that money to buy a laptop that's like or a phone at the end of the year that's something i can't afford in one so that's like my long term i might keep some of that money for maybe improving on the house or something but that's what i want those are my big ticket items then for like my small savings i have like a box which i keep under my bed where i just keep on throwing like coins which usually helps me especially in like <laughs> jan you guys that car box is jan. important i used to have one for for myself and one for ihan my story is like mm. there's some time i had i came the time I came from China, I had so many things and my business couldn't pay. I broke Ihan's card box. It paid the person! I was like, 
yeah but i try to stay away from coins because the coins just make the thing heavy, heavy for, nothing. for nothing yeah so yeah that car box is a good idea i have a car box i have a chibina and then for my emergency fund i do save in a bank account but then um i, I put a certain amount of money in the bank account but i know myself i am very very i am very very susceptible to using it so in for me not using it i to make sure i don't use it i save using treasury bills because treasury bills first of all are, are default free meaning um <laughs> the government cannot fail to pay back your money actually the treasury bills have um, a higher interest than what than than the banks you know and it's 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 easy it's easy for saving so i usually keep the money there and i know you know what for one year i've put like maybe a hundred five hundred k there one million there that's my emergency fund as it keeps on earning money because you cannot save and put money in an account that's bringing you back less than the what the money you put the money you put my, my, my and the inflation the NCB, I think they put from like 17 k <laughs> my inflation so for example i went on to stand big banks and i looked at their savings bank um their savings account rates they are between i think one to four percent a year and inflation is 5.6 percent you guys that means your 100k that you're saving this year is going to earn maybe um 4k but inflation is removing about 5600 so inflation oh, is so it's taking out taking off that 4k that, you that, and that and some little money off your money off, that's off your 100k and you're paying um you're paying ledger fees uh, monthly you know you, you know that's those charges. good savings so that's not a savings account money. so equity guys equity does not have monthly charges it even my SBA yeah. does not have monthly charges actually however it doesn't pay interest that's the issue. Yeah, equity doesn't. But I, you know, I realized I didn't know my NCBA account um, pays. pays. So I, yeah. I saw and I was like, they added me money. How? You know, it wasn't like a big amount, but I'm like, you know, it's sit been sitting there. And also, one way, because for me, I'm just like, I think I need to cut my my Visa <laughs> cards. I need to. So this other one that I, my account that I say for my savings, it's been like long-term savings slash emergency mm. fund because i use it to invest in my other project so i don't have an atm card anyway what i was saying is um um a tip i think for me mm. is i don't have an atm card for that and that account i cannot transact on that it's, app yeah it's on the app it's on my ncba app but i cannot transact off it yeah so it saves me because there are times when you're like yolo <laughs> let them bring the food <laughs> you know <laughs> but like even if you want you cannot withdraw you have to go to the bank and queue and you're thinking i go to the bank and queue for what it's not that deep right so i guess that's one way to restrain yourself it's from you throwing that money around the noise is a lot i'm always going to she's going to be a guest every month actually i think we should have like financial tuesdays yeah i would love and that. then and then you just keep on telling us because i am very the same money like i don't know i'm not i'm horrible with money but i'm ready to do better so the battery is warning i don't know it leaves some questions for Amo she'll be able to respond and then she's got a page guys follow her on Instagram busy finance on busy finance and then her personal page I'm going to leave them here and also in the description box and then she'll definitely be back what would you want her to talk about for me I want her to do research on the banks okay. let her come back and give us the best banks for us to bank in if is it centenary or DFCU or whatever and we, just to compare notes and also um, 